dear colleagues and the attendees. Uh, today, really, uh, we are going to discuss a special uh, and hot and uh, very important topic, uh, which is sepsis. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, today, really, a special night. We are going to enjoy and sharing a professional and experienced uh, personnel with uh, four famous and talented guest speakers. As we know, sepsis is uh, defined simply as uh, a dysregulated immune response to infection. Sepsis is sometimes difficult to uh, and represent some challenge for diagnosis and you can go through extensive biomarker, biomarkers uh, investigation and lab investigation and so on. And the main problem of sepsis really, it uh, leads to cognitive dysfunction, psychological breakdown and function disability. And so it is a loading problem, not only for the patient, but also for the family and for the society and causing too much cost. When we speak about sepsis, really, we have to ask many questions. And I think this night, all our questions and all our query uh, will be answered by our uh, uh, famous uh, guest speakers. We have to ask about what, what is the meaning by early goal therapy and what is the difference between early goal directed therapy and late and what is the optimum time, two hour, one hour, six hours, and as we know, every year or every two years or every three, there is a new definition for sepsis to try to avoid missing uh, occult states or missing diagnosis of septic tissues. Also, we have to ask about many, uh, many problems in, uh, in sepsis. Uh, about antibiotic, for example, we have to start empirical antibiotic without culture or directed uh, therapy, better and waiting the culture results is very important. And if we start empirical, what is the, what is the rule of steward regulation of this antibiotic after that? There are many points also, which will be answered by our guest speakers, inshallah, about uh, the rule of steroids uh, and at what time we have to use, the role of statins, the role of nutritional support and the immune modulation. What is the role of vitamin C, vitamin D, and, and, and? And what is the meaning of this regulation of immune response? This is meaning hyperimmunity or low immunity or hyperinflammation and the cytokine storm and how to avoid the rule of uh, anticoagulant and even thrombolytics in such situations. So at what time we have to use it? Many, many questions really also, what is the role of CRT and the hemofiltration especially, and if it decreases the cytokine storm and improves the patient result, all these are questions and we have to uh, share our guest speakers and their experience, which is, I think, professional experience. And really, I am lucky today, and I'm lucky this night to introduce my dear colleague, Dr. Hisham Atayam from the Gazik University. He working now as an intensive care consultant in King uh, Abdullah Medical City in Mecca, Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Uh, and I hope to sharing him and try to help me for welcoming him. Welcome Dr. Hisham and the mic for you. Welcome Dr. Ansari, thanks for this intro. Uh, Inshallah, I, I... It is my pleasure to join this uh, great team and the great uh, uh, webinar regarding sepsis and to be a presenter also in, uh, in this webinar. It, it is an honor to me, inshallah. Uh, today, inshallah, I will go directly to my topic, which is a one hour approach uh, uh, to uh, a septic patient. Okay. Uh, uh, our objective today, inshallah, to understand sepsis is a, as a, as a life-threatening disorder, sepsis pathophysiology, and the importance of early intervention if, uh, if we discover the patient in sepsis, and our uh, one bundle uh, priorities and targets. Uh, despite the best uh, efforts and protocol-based management, sepsis is continued to be a significant healthcare issue. It carries high mortality up to 25% of sepsis 
uh, may die 50% of the patient went in septic shock. The global burden of disease study in 2017 reported that sepsis occurred in up to 50 million people worldwide, ending to a death of 11 million, which represent up to 20% of the global deaths. NHIS uh, uh, reported 2019 that sepsis is the leading cause of death in lung cardiac ICU. So sepsis, uh, 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 another issue of sepsis is the regarding increasing mortality, it also increasing morbidity. 40% of sepsis survivors after a prolonged ICU stay were found to have a range of physical, uh, psychological, and cognitive complications. Up to 43% of sepsis survivors is found in one study did not return back to work for one year. Sepsis is also considered as a, as a, a, a burden on resources. It costs 17 billion per year. This is a very important slide, this important diagram and the flow chart, which we can start uh, with a patient, healthy patient, when he develop infection, either he will go to appropriate host response or an inappropriate host response or exacerbated host response, which will end by, if the appropriate response, he will end by recovery. If inappropriate res uh, response by organ failure, sepsis, and it may go secondary infection, ICU stay, prolonged ICU stay, and chronic illness, which was persistent inflammatory immune suppression and catabolism syndrome, may later on end by recovery or longer term complication of sepsis and morbidity, or may end by this, as we discussed before, it is up to 50% may die from sepsis. So what is infection? Infection occurs when a germ may enter body inducing tissue damage. If we have appropriate host response, balanced response of pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory mediators, infection will be controlled, tissue healing will occur, and the recovery is the final uh, destination. Some people did not go with appropriate or balanced response of pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory, so it went into exacerbated and unbalanced or dysregulated host response uh, to uh, uh, infection and end by associated with organ failure. This is what's called, we have a sepsis. So sepsis by definition is result related from infection, dysregulated response, organ dysfunction, and life threatening as discussed, affecting morbidity, mortality, and uh, cost uh, uh, issue. So as the sepsis can be in uh, definition, uh, sepsis is a life threatening organ dysfunction due to dysregulated host response, to infection. So why dysregulation happen? Actually, it's of unknown cause. We don't know why patients develop dysregulated response. Imbalance between the pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory. So, but we have high-risk patients. So we have to keep on our, our, our eyes on this high-risk patient. High-risk patient, elderly people, more than 65 years, they found the age by itself. It's an independent predictor of mortality. Immune suppression, our immune compromised patient or cancer patient have tenfold increase in risk of developing sepsis. Community acquired pneumonia causing sepsis around 50% uh, of community acquired pneumonia develop sepsis and 5% develop septic shock. Previous hospitalization, it carry up to threefold increase the risk of developing sepsis for subsequent 90 days for patients especially who are receiving antibiotic. Intensive care unit admission, uh, also, it carries risk of nosocomial infection up to 50%. Boosted blood culture, bacteremia, 95% of patients uh, uh, develop bacteremia, develop sepsis and septic shock. And some genetic predisposition, when we found some people with genetic predisposition to develop sepsis. So, second point we have to, to, to know about it, organ dysfunction. What is the definition of organ dysfunction? Organ dysfunction is defined in sepsis campaign as a, in, an increase in SOFA score by at least two points from the baseline. So uh, what is SOFA score? SOFA score is a, a sequential organ failure assessment score. It's used only on mainly in ICU and it, it used to predict mortality. It assesses the severity of dysfunction for six organs, CNS, cardiovascular, respiratory, GI, renal, and hematological disorder. It, is, it should be calculated on admission to ICU, then every 48 hours. 
سوف سكور نفس الاشياء في الميديكال كي كان سيمبلي يو كان جو ذا ميديكال كان بوت ذا بارامتر اوف يور بيشنت اند فايتال ساينز اند لاب لاب فايندينج اند ذن يو ويل فايند ذا سوف سكور سو اف وي ريتش تو سوف سكور اور مور سو وي هاف بير ديفينيشن اورجان ديس فانكشن اند اف وي ريتش تو اور مور تو ات ايكوال 20% مورتاليتي اف وي سي هير اف وي هاف ا بيشنت ويز بي اف ريتش ويز 300 With creatinine raised from baseline to two, more than two, liver dysfunction and uh, 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 cardiovascular is hypotensive, and uh, with thrombocytopenia, it with GCS is low. It may reach mortality up to 95 percent. So for score, it is not applicable for screening, especially outside ICU. ICU uh, outside ICU screening, it needs something simple fast way to screen patient outside ICU because most of the required data for SOFA score are not usually available at the bedside. And also SOFA score is not applicable with pregnancy. We have some physiological changes which, which occur with pregnancy overlap with the criteria for sepsis. So for this uh, 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 two difficulties, they made uh, for screening a very simple, very fast, which is called quick SOFA. It is the three simple parameter, altered conscious level, blood pressure, and respiratory rate. And if quick sofa score more, two or more, it is bare definition, possibility or susceptibility of the development, uh, uh, the presence of sepsis. And it is used mainly outside ICU, cannot be used in ICU. Uh, but quick sofa score is have uh, some limitation. It is low sensitivity up to 50%. It identified identify patient late in the course of sepsis. And it needs a careful interpretation for uh, uh, defining a sepsis. The physician should know if this patient already uh, 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 has these changes in the, in the baseline state associated to infection. And he should know also the pre existing chronic disease. If the patient already has a stroke, the sepsis conscious level from the start, his basal blood pressure around uh, 90. So he should, know, he should decide this patient already in sepsis or not in sepsis. For pregnancy, uh, due to the overlap of the physiological parameters, there's a sepsis in the static score, SOS score, which makes some modification of the uh, vital signs and the parameters related to the physiological changes. But actually, this score is still under validation, it's not uh, approved till now. Uh, why organ dysfunction happen? If we have a patient that we know the definition of organ dysfunction, what is the mechanism of organ dysfunction for in sepsis patient? If we say the high risk patient exposed to pathogen, it will go in cytokine storm imbalance, increase pro inflammatory more than the anti inflammatory. Activation of different systems. Uh, this different system, the uh, complement, uh, coagulation cascade, platelet, uh, endothelium, uh, polymorph. I will go to the next flow chart, it will explain it more easily and more uh, 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 clear explanations. So if you have this regulated response, more pro-inflammatory mediators, with this activation of coagulation cascade, which make more than the fibrinolytic system, make micros from by, affecting the capillary perfusion itself. Activation of polymorph nucleocytes, it will stimulate the intercellular injury and increase permeability and the tissue, then tissue edema. Again, tissue edema, it will make a more pressure and encouragement on the micro capillaries. In the cell injury also, and the stimulation increased pro pro uh, prostacycline and nitric oxide, which is caused vasodilatation, then hypotension. Loss of the autoregulation, and autoregulation is the, is the main concern if a patient in shock. Autoregulation is the mechanism by which the body can di divert or shift the blood from non-vital organs to a vital organs, prey on the heart. In sepsis due to nitric oxide and the prostacycline, patient and the body failed uh, to control uh, out to a loss of its autoregulation uh, mechanism. This myocardial depression okay due to mediators and decreased cardiac output. It is suicide also it lost it, its normal ability to deform. So failed to go through the micro circulation. So from this all initial four parameters we found we have decreased oxygen delivery, hypotension and hyperfusion and oxygen carry and the RBCs itself, we cannot go through the micro circulation. So we have a point here, decreased oxygen delivery to the cells. Even the cells that may be affected with mitochondrial dysfunction, even if the blood, if the oxygen reaches the cell, the cell 
it cannot utilize it. Failure to utilize oxygen due to mitochondrial dysfunction, which happen with this, uh, this regulated host of storms. Activation of different cell uh, this pathways and causing more injury. So by this, we have widespread cell injury and organ uh, dysfunction, which may end by septic shock and uh, which is by definition sepsis can be in fluid refractory hypotension requiring vasopressors with tissue, tissue hyperfusion documented by rising lactate more than two. So we have no organ system immune against the complication of sepsis. No organ is protected uh, from consequences of sepsis. So in nurse cardiovascular spiat, we have up to 50% may, de may develop uh, acute encolopsy related to sepsis, 60% cardiomyopathy, and 7% of septic patients may develop ARDS. Again, we go, go again to the, our important slide, in, uh, 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 which you throw it, we have to know. We have to block or to break this cycle. We have to uh, early recognize patients with infection and the sepsis, and we have to go for early intervention to prevent this great complications and major complications of morbidity, mortality, and the cost. Early recognition it should be through the awareness community, awareness of uh, medical staff, and by screening. We have to put a system of screening to the early recognition of patients and sepsis. In KMC, alhamdulillah, we initiated by the help of Dr. Adel Hussein to reach a plan for sepsis alert team and uh, screening. Still under processing and uh, hold for a while because of the uh, uh, corona status. And inshallah, we can resume after within the, within the coming months, inshallah. Early intervention as per sepsis campaign, we need the team to follow and to manage. We have to go through uh, 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 the evidence-based guideline or evidence-based recommendation, which is our one bundle. Our one bundle actually it is uh, uh, five points mainly: uh, measuring lactate, blood uh, culture before antibiotic, broad spectrum antibiotic, began IV fluid, and apply vasopressors if indicated. We'll start by the uh, uh, first one, which is lactate. Lactate. Uh, measure lactate and re uh, remeasure if initial lactate uh, to, uh, uh, more than two millimole per liter. So this is the best way which we uh, end by production of lactate. If we have glucose metabolism, it may go to anaerobic pathway, aerobic pathway and end by energy production, or end by anaerobic pathway and giving us lactate. So in general, if patients we have hyperlactatemia, we have many causes of hyperlactatemia. It may be exogenous if we are using lactate as a buffer, buffer during CRRT machine or endogenous. The endogenous come from overproductions of pyruvate, glucose, glyco increased glycolysis, and overproduction of pyruvate. So glycolysis may be due to basal metabolic rate issue, uh, uh, beta-2 agonist stimulant we are seeing in epinephrine use, it's a beta-1 medication. Or it may be another, we have another substrate for this increased pyruvate production. We have hematological malignancy, which is the commonest finding in ICU to find patients with hyperlactatemia due to underlying hematological malignancy due to overproduction of pyruvate substrate. Second, if we have a problem in pyruvate clearance, like pyruvate dehydrogenase problem, which you are seeing uh, due to thiamine deficiency, metformin toxicity, and in some people with congenital disorders. We may have another option or point regarding the pyruvate clearance, which is due to mitochondrial dysfunction, due to decreased oxygen delivery, cyanide toxicity, or drugs commonly using antibiotic, which is one of the medications which may increase lactate due to its effect on mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative phosphorylation process. And we have may have, if we have anaerobic uh, uh, production of lactate, if we have liver impairment, renal impairment is a matter of clearance. So in sepsis, we see sepsis, patient in sepsis, we may use epinephrine, we may use, uh, uh, we, uh, sepsis also document to have a thiamine deficiency, uh, we may have a sepsis in hematological malignancy, we may have oxygen delivery decreased as discussed in pathophysiology, antibiotic use of lenzolid, organ dysfunction, liver and the kidney. So this is the main causes of increased lactate of during uh, sepsis or septic shock. Uh, lactate uh, is a marker of tissue hypoxemia and ischemia. It does not diagnose sepsis. As I said, we have many other causes rising lactate, not related to the sepsis. 
but it can tell us how bad his circulation and the tissue is uh, oxygenation is this. We can make use of uh, or get benefits from monitoring lactate in sepsis. It may identify for us early detection of what's called cryptic shock. Cryptic shock is the patient in shock while preserved blood pressure. So blood pressure is not a marker of shock. Tissue hyperfusion and uh, hyperlactatemia or tissue hyperfusion is the marker of septic shock, what's called cryptic shock. Preserved blood pressure with tissue hyperfusion. It predicts outcome. If we have still rising lactate despite our management or rising lactate outside in the floor, it may be an indication for poor outcome and they may need ICU admission to ICU. Uh, it helps to guide therapy. If we, if we can uh, lactate to decrease with fluid challenges as a monitor, we, this may be the indication. We, it may help us to decide we may go for fluid challenge more and more. Uh, second point is a straightforward point. We need blood culture before giving antibiotic. It's not uh, a matter, good, good, good blood culture before giving antibiotic. But I will give them some practical points, it's very important. So don't delay antibiotics to get the culture. If you have a problem in the, in the, in the resources, problem in the uh, potential availability, uh, problem in the availability of the uh, stuff getting the culture, give the antibiotic, don't delay. Don't set blood culture from any vascular devices inserted uh, less than 48 hours. It is unlikely to be a source of infection. Fill aerobic bottle first. If you don't have enough sample, as most organisms grow mainly aer aer aerobically. In 50% of patients, the source will not be determined, which is culture negative sepsis, which can be seen in respiratory tract infection. Are the, moment, the common size to be culture negative? And, but, uh, but urinary tract infection are the likely to be a culture positive. Uh, other uh, uh, causes of uh, culture negative, receiving a antibiotic prior, admi prior to admission, insufficient or incomplete diagnostic workup, unusual organism, or this situation is not related to non-infectious cause. Let me go with culture negative. Uh, Give broad spectrum antibiotic. Antibiotic and in delay of antibiotic more than one hour, it will increase mortality. Appropriate empiric antibiotic should be based on or guided by the possible source there, immune compromised patient, local antibiogram, risk factor for resistance organ resistant organism. For the possible sources, they found pneumonia represent 50% of the cases went on sepsis and septic shock. United tract 20%. The least causes of sepsis or septic shock endocarditis, device-related meningitis, and uh, uh, others, which so is totally at 5%. Uh, we have to know also, in appropriate antibiotic use for improper selection, it will increase mortality by 34%. The best way, of course, to know the antibiotic is to know the organism by the cultural sensitivity and to know the MIC, but it needs time. Uh, De-escalation the, and the early cessation of antibiotics should be discussed daily. Antibiotic seven to 10 days course of antibiotic is appropriate for most infection, but we may need, may need longer course of treatment if we, have, if we cannot uh, so control source in immune compromised patient in a special situation like staph aureus bacteremia, endocarditis, and fungal infection. The fourth point is to start to get fluid. As the sepsis guideline, uh, they recommend to infusion of intravenous fluid Certain well per kg starting within the first for uh, the first one hour and completed within the first three hours of presentation. But uh, does it applicable for all patients? For all patients, we have to give the 30 ml per kg. What about uh, renal failure patient? What about heart failure patient? What about ERDS patient on mechanical ventilation and conservative management? So uh, to know we have to go for all patients or not, we have to know some facts there. The only reason to give IV fluid is to improve our uh, cardiac output. If we have patient, uh, if I give fluid to a patient, what I what what I waiting for the result to increase cardiac output. If cardiac output is increasing, so the patient will not get benefit. Not all shock patients will get benefit from giving fluids. Approximately 50% of fluid bolus fail to improve cardiac output. Giving unnecessary fluid uh, exposes the patient to a volume overload, which worsens patient outcome. 
a lot of studies uh, supporting the concept of conservative flow resuscitation and documented the, the worsening in the outcome and uh, volume overload, like PAPT trial, PAST trial, FIST trial, many trials going with conservative, actually improving the outcome and tissue edema and renal replacement therapy, positive balance and uh, giving more fluid and uh, uh, volume overload, it will end by increased mortality. So why not all patients will get benefit from giving fluids? So according to Frank Sterling uh, principle, uh, the preload increase, the stroke volume increase up to limit. This is the curve. If preload increase, the stroke volume increase. Straight path. In normal physiological condition, both vent ventricles operate in the ascending portion of the Frank Sterling curve. Once the left ventricle is functioning near the, the flat part of the flank starting curve, the fluid loading has little effect on the stroke volume. So here. So we need our patient to be in this flat part. We need, we, so we have to find the fluid responder, which will benefit from fluid resuscitation. By giving, when I give a fluid, he should have an increase in the, cardiac, in the stroke volume and the cardiac output. And with reasonable rise in the preload, if we reach here, we'll see here we have large increase in cardiac output in this area, but here we have a small increase in cardiac output, but large increase in the extravascular lung water, which carries risk of volume overload, more worsening of the uh, hemodynamics, more volume overload, uh, and worsening the outcome. So ascending portion of the startling cave is our target to find our patient here. How to determine fluid tolerance and the fluid responders? Uh, we need two things. We need two points to reach, uh, to, uh, must be met. Uh, we have to create a change in preload, and we have to assess this change in the preload uh, and the effect on the cardiac output and uh, uh, stroke volume. The change of the preload is by in the mainly in three points. A change in preload with heart-lung interaction, change in preload with Fluid challenge. change in preload by fluid redistribution. So, a change in preload starts along the interaction. Uh, as we know, they are uh, make use of the change in the interstitial pressure during inspiration and expiration. During that time, during the expiration, during inspiration, finally we have decreased the right ventricular stroke volume, but we have increased the ventricular stroke volume and increased blood pressure. During expiration, the refers to seal. We have decreased the right left ventricular stroke volume. So blood pressure increased during inspiration and the pulse pressure increased during inspira inspiration and decreased during expiration. Through uh, non invasive cardiac output monitoring, we can check these variations, pulse pressure variation, stroke volume variation, systolic pressure variation, or VTI by, by echo or vena cava indices I will not go in detail through uh, this indices because it needs by itself it's, uh, another lecture. But we have to know we have a, a, a way to, uh, assess, to assess or to make a change in the preload by heartland interaction to assess blood, flow response through this modalities. But this modalities actually in ICU, we may face a difficulty to be applied in ICU. It needs all to be with sinus res, normal si volume cycle ventilation, tidal volume at least 8 ml per kg, heart lung, heart rate or to rate ratio, no ventilator patient ventilated synchrony, normal chest compliance, the normal intra-abdominal pressure, and the normal uh, uh, pulmonary compliance. Another way of flow the challenge uh, assessment or change in preload by flow the challenge. Flow change used mainly to stop flow. That we know, we, we now we decide we go with conservative management of flow. The only patient will get flow is the flow responders to avoid flow overload, which increase in mortality. So the target flow the change to test this patient is already has a good volume. I will stop giving flow. The advantages of the disadvantages of flow the change is that I give already flow. I cannot remove it again. The patient already volume overload and I give flow the change. So he receives the fluid, becomes more overloaded. So to do uh, uh, fluid challenge, it requires also three points. We need to get volume within a time. 
we need to assess response, which is which should be uh, 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 through uh, 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 monitors. We have to avoid false interpretation. For volume uh, within a time, we have to give volume crystalloid for a male per kg, or we may go, go with colloid, which is called mini fluid challenge, 10, 100 ml per, uh, stat. A time should be within 10 to 15 minutes, rapid administration to avoid, uh, because if, if we go with low administration of this fluid challenge, redistribution of this fluid, and it lost its effect as a fluid challenge, as a fluid bolus to the patient. We have to assess the response through increase in MAP, in decrease in heart rate, clinically, the increase in cardiac output and st or stroke volume by 10%, or echo assessment, the reasonable raise in the uh, uh, cardiac uh, filling pressure. And we have, to, we have to avoid false interpretation. Uh, any stimulation of the patient, any change of the regimen of medication currently the patient is on, it may affect the result. So don't touch the patient, don't stimulate him. Don't increase or add a new uh, medication like vasopressors do, don't increase the dose, don't start vasopressors and do fluid challenge. It may mislead you as an interpretation of fluid challenge. Uh, the third and uh, last one to change in the preload is by uh, fluid redistribution. Fluid redistribution uh, through passive leg is uh, uh, lifting the leg passively from horizontal position Inducing a gravitational transfer of about around 300 ml from the lower limbs towards the intrathoracic uh, compartment. Passive uh, uh, leg is, is considered uh, auto transfusion. It is reversible. It is different from fluid challenge. It is reversible. If I don't found my patient fluid responder, so if I just uh, 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 reversing its effect, once the leg are tilted down again. So its effect is uh, resolved and this effect is subsides. So it's considered auto transfusion and reversible. Uh, the fear uh, and the gene uh, 2015 put five rules to do basically grade in a proper way. Uh, first to, to start from the semi-recumbent and not from the supine position. Put the patient semi-recumbent first, first, first step. Must be assessed by direct measurement of the cardiac output and not by the simple measurement of the blood pressure. Passively graze, it will take time only one minute. It will vanish within one minute. So real, we need real time monitoring of the cardiac output. So echo, pass contour analysis, so gel doubler, change in the exhale inside the carbon dioxide. It may guide uh, real time monitoring of the cardiac output. Cardiac output must be measured during and after uh, passively graze in order to check that it return to its baseline. Again, like uh, a flow the challenge, avoid false interpretation. Bronchial secretion, suction, stimulation of the patient, uh, uh, touching the patient by your hand and performing, raising uh, a grease by your hand, it may stimulate the patient. It may falsely giving impression of increased cardiac output while it is due to your stimulation and increased catecholamine in, uh, by your stimulation. Uh, we have to know also flow of this station in general. It is, we are testing flow responsiveness mainly. It makes sense only in circulatory failure. Keep in mind that none of these tests are 100% sensitive or specific. You have to keep your eyes on fluid balance under or over hydration. It may harm the patient. Dynamic blood pressure monitoring, uh, tissue hyperfusion, lactate clearance, and the most important urine output also can be used as a monitor. With any new vital changes, please reassess your patient again. This is a very nice review, 2018. The uh, principle of fluid management uh, and stewardship in septic shock. It is time to consider four Ds and four phases of fluid therapy. The, uh, it's a very nice review. It, it deals with the fluid like a drug. We need four Ds like a drug. The, what is the type of the drug you will use? Uh, duration, dosing, and de escalation. We need also to manage uh, fluid resuscitation as an, an arose concept. It starts by resuscitation, optimization, stabilization, and evacuation. De escalation and evacuation means all of them we are, de we are going to also conservative. We have to limit volume overload. They found a patient to boost the balance by day three in ICU, it increased mortality.
So also this is the view. Can you just uh, get more quicker? Just uh, coming to a conclusion, please. Sorry. Yeah, okay. okay. Just give me uh, uh, three minutes only. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, what type of fluid? Fluid uh, mainly uh, uh, by evidence based on the study found uh, linger like uh, uh, crystalloid like colloid. But in subgroup analysis or meta analysis, we found colloid is the best. But due to availability and uh, the low and the higher cost, uh, they are concerning and recommending crystalloid. Uh, this is a nice study, also a uh, 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 smart trial 2018. They mentioned we have nine reasons to stop using normal saline and to go for use of uh, 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 ringer lactate. The nine, the eight reason, the previous, the previous eight, the first eight reason due to the harm effect of uh, uh, normal saline. The reason number nine, because if it is a better option, we have we have ringer lactate is more important. Currently, we have uh, uh, two running studies, big two, two big studies, basics, basics study, which uh, finished in October 2020. And it will be uh, expected to be discussed in next meeting, 2021, uh, in critical care meeting, inshallah. It is by, uh, in, done in Brazil. In Australia, another study, the same, lasmalite versus normal saline, it will end by March 2021, after waiting the result. And finally, is the appropriate use of antibiotic or you're applying vasopressors if hypotension uh, during uh, or after. <laughs> two, uh, uh, if a patient presented initially by hypotension, it carried twofold in case mortality. We are, our target management to, to reach a map is to restore organ function. We don't have a, a target map, is our, our management is not the map, the target. We need organ function, we need organ perfusion. So initially we need a map, this map should increase organ perfusion pressure or reach the target organ perfusion pressure, which will later on improve uh, organ function. A target map perceptive uh, campaign uh, more than or equal 65 millimeter light. But we may accept lower map, especially in patients we have uh, uh, cardiomyopathy, low ejection fraction, low contractility. We may accept the map, we may accept a higher map in patients with hypertensive. It was increased the ICB, was increased the intra-abdominal pressure, was increased the CVB. All this one we are dealing with auto, uh, 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 sorry, increased the, the organ perfusion. So our target is the organ perfusion pressure, not a map. Our target is the organ function, not a map. Of course, we the recent study 2020 recommend any use of other it will improve the outcome and de decrease the burden of uh, uh, using uh, volume overload. A little standard vasopressin is an add to decrease the requirement of uh, 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 level fed, but alone as a monotherapy failed to show any improvement. Tobamine can, uh, it is not recommended, but maybe used uh, uh, in significant bradycardia. Angiotensin 2 is approved, but still we have limited study for using as an alternative as a vasopressor. pressors. Uh, our band, one hour bonded practice, we face a problem regarding the start, which one hour, from where we should start in time? From sepsis onset or from ER entrance, from diagnosis, from antibiotic order. The antibiotic within one hour. Till now in our hostel, we fail to give antibiotic within one hour from diagnosis system problem, uh, entering, approving, culture, everything. We, we fail to give within one hour. And this is a study 2019, they said they found no difference between giving antibiotic within three hour or within one hour. Lastly, lactate availability as a motoring in, in all hostels is not available all the time. I think uh, our own bundle should be reviewed maybe three, turn it back to three hour bundle maybe more applicable and the uh, take home message, uh, despite best effort of protocol based uh, management, sepsis continue to be a significant healthcare issue. Early recognition and then intervention save lives. Till now, our one bundle is a recommended initial protocol of management. Delay or appropriate antibiotic increase uh, mortality. Not all shock patients will get benefit from giving fluid. You have to find the fluid responder and the resuscitation target is to achieve an adequate map and maintain organ perfusion pressure, which help restoration of organ function. 
Thanks a lot and thanks for time. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shem. Uh, nice uh, and attractive lecture, really, and uh, updating and summarized. Thank you. We have uh, some questions here, and I think uh, routine questions in such in such cases of sepsis. Uh, what is fluid you prefer? Type of fluid you prefer? And if you give lactate, uh, renal lactate, uh, you don't afraid from increasing lactate level. Uh, actually, like, uh, first of all, full as per recommendation, the guideline and the study and this, we said the smartest uh, trial, it recommend mainly uh, renal lactate. Normal saline carry a lot of mortality, a, a lot of drawbacks, hypercholinic hyper metabolic acidosis, renal impairment, chronic renal dialysis. So the first choice currently, per evidence, is the renal lactate. Renal lactate does not contain lactate. It con it it's by carb, it is mainly, mainly metabolized in the liver and in the by, by carb, and even it may improve the acid base disorders of a patient with uh, 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 septic shock. Uh, right. Uh, about biomarkers and uh, brocalcitonin and uh, lactate level, you, do, uh, you depend on these biomarkers for giving antibiotic? Yes, uh, brocalcitonin is now uh, yeah, one point we can cut point to point five, we can use at least than point five. It may not be considered that as, uh, as a bacterial infection, but we may have a, another, and yani brocalcitonin mainly used for bacterial infection. Cut point to point five, less than point five, we not consider bacterial infection. More than we may consider adding a starting antibody. And also it may be used for monitoring and the follow up. If the case the by 50 to 80 percent from the baseline after initiation of antibiotic, it may give us a clue that we are going in the uh, uh, in the right way. And even we may use it as a do to de-escalate antibiotic use also. Uh, another uh, nice question. Lactate. Uh, lactate, for lactate, we have a, a, a concern regarding lactate. We have many causes of lactate. Lactate is, uh, uh, may be due to tissue hyperfusion. It may be you have another cause. You have to be clear, uh, 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 clear with dealing with lactate as a source of hyperfusion. Maybe we have another cause, decreased clearance, the uh, increased production. So we have to think for lactate first. Yes, differentiation between dextro and libo lactate, of, of, uh, of course. Uh, about another question that she asked about the leg raising. It is essential or mandatory to be automatic by bed red or you I suppose you have no automatic bed. You can you can raise manual, but you are afraid from as you told. Simulation. Explained from inter, uh, force uh, interpretation. Yes. Yes. Mm. So uh, uh, should I, be, I should as, be, as the recommendation should be by uh, 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 automatic by the bed to avoid stimulation. If we have patient already deeply sedated and good energy, muscle relaxant. And you have a monitor of level of sedation, like this monitor while he's a muscle relaxant, you may use it by your hand if you don't have availability of uh, uh, the automatic bed. Uh, about CRT and anti-inflammatory in cases of excessive pro-inflammatory state, uh, you prefer to give as in cases of cytokine storm and so on? Is well, CRT? Uh, you mean CRT or? CRT, uh, yes, I think I uh, ask about CRT and especially hemofiltration in such situations of severe sepsis. Well, I think now I don't have uh, an evidence to use it and uh, to remove inflammatory markers, but uh, I don't have actually uh, an evidence. If, if, you, if you allow me, really, from our experience in ICU, it is, uh, uh, it is very good and essential especially in cases of severe inflammatory state. And even in other uh, situations like heart failure and so on, it removes some of the cytokines and decrease the degree of sepsis, especially if you use continue venovenous hemodialysis filtration. <clears throat> Sometimes use it for two days, three days, or even one week to <clears throat> tell the patient the hemodynamic state and move. Uh, nice lecture, Dr. Hisham, and uh, thanks for you, and thanks for this nice presentation. Um, really very nice and very good and highly attractive. Thank you. Thank you.